Good morning. So let's learn how to draw this splayed leg. The student might start out by drawing the leg at much as we did in the beginner's tutorial and then create the 3D leg and at that point try to splay it in two axes by using the rotate tool. That would be wrong. That would be a mistake. I'm going to let the student go down that path and figure out why they made a mistake. But here I'm going to show you the correct way to do it. So instead of starting off with this 3D leg and then splaying it, I'm going to erase a few things. All we want to start with is the front view of the leg. The leg is 20 inches tall. It tapers to one inch on the bottom. The taper begins seven inches from the top and the top itself is two inches wide. Okay, now we're going to want to group this for the moment. By the way, this is one of the very, very, very few times you'll ever see me use a group, but it's only momentarily. I'll choose that and make group. Now with this profile, one thing I can do is splay the leg 15 degrees. But before I do, I need some reference points. So what I'm going to do is use the tape measure tool and create a couple of lines. This one will be will represent the floor and it'll be right along the red axis. This one will represent the top if I get it right that'll represent the top and it'll be take a measurement here 20 inches up Okay, so now let me go to ISO view and using the rotate tool, I'm going to fix it to the front, hold the shift key down. I'm going to this magic point up here in the upper left hand corner, click down along the blue axis and bring it out 15 degrees. Hit enter. All right, now if I look at this from the front view, I'll notice that because I splayed it 15 degrees, the bottom of the leg no longer touches. That's why I drew these reference lines here, because I'm going to want to extend the bottom. I can do that in edit group mode. I'm also going to have to extend the top, by the way. So I'll do that in edit group mode. and zoom in here. I'll use the tape measure tool again to create a, a line parallel with that line so it extends it down here. The same thing here. Click on this, bring it back to zero. That gives me an extension of this line. I can now erase this bottom Go to the end point here, down to this point, over to this point, and then back to this end point. I may have to zoom in close for that one. Okay, that does the bottom. Let's get the top. I'm going to use a similar technique of um, giving myself a reference point here. Erase the top. Connect that, connect it to the endpoint. Notice I got a face all the way down to the bottom. That's good. Click outside the bounding box. Get rid of my guidelines. And now I have the profile I really want. The splayed leg, it's tapered, and all of that. Touches the floor, parallel with the floor at the top. 
everything looks good. Now what I'm going to do is once more edit this by going to edit group mode again. I'm going to look at it from the ISO view. What I want to do is I want to extend it and I want to extrude it in two directions. Like that and like that. Notice by the way that when I extended the top I connected two lines at a point. That point became an extruded line. I'm going to want to get rid of that line. And I have a similar one down at the bottom. I'll just get rid of those. And let's just make sure we don't have any more. Looks like we might have something down here. Get rid of that. And I think that's it. Just take a quick look around. Okay. So now I can look at this front ISO. I have this extruded leg. What I want to do is I, I need the orthogonal view of this. This is the front view. I need the end view of this. So what I'm going to do is use the rotate tool again in the copy mode. First thing I'm going to do is lock it uh, to the top of this on the and I'm going to find again I'm going to stay to this top edge which remember this top right point here well when that becomes extruded it's a line I want to find the center of that line someplace along here there it is right there click now I can go down here click again and rotate it. Now I'm going to want to rotate it 90 degrees but I want to copy this. I don't want to move it. Just rotate it. I want to copy it. So I'll hit the control key. The original will stay where it is. and This next one will um, rotate 90 degrees. And We can either type in 90 or click on this little tick mark here. There we go. Now I have two of them. One represents the front view and the other one represents the end view. Both of them splayed out. If I go to the orthogonal view, I can see both of them. I want to select each one and explode it. Select this one and explode it. Now I can triple click and select all the primitives for both of them. And go to my happy intersect faces with model tool. With that done, I could start erasing things. Let's look at this from the front view. And I'll use the select tool to erase what I don't want. I'm going to start with the right to left method and select the things I don't want. I don't want that. I don't want that. I'll do the same thing looking at the end view. Don't want that. Don't want that. And now if I look at the ISO view, I in fact have a splayed leg. The tapers are in on the inside. I it looks correct from the front view. That looks like a 15 degree taper. It looks correct from the end view. Again, that looks like a 15 degree taper, or splay, I should say, not taper, splay. The taper is whatever it is from 7 inches down, which, by the way, is no longer 7 inches. Um, let's see. It's going to be 7 and a little bit. And there you go. And that's because we had to add some to the top to make it flat. All of our dimensions now will be slightly different than they were before. And this is because of the complex angle. Further, let me look at this from the top view. That looks like a perfect rectangle or a perfect square. And I'm sure it is. Ninety degrees. 
And if I take the rectangle tool, start here, and go here, it tells me that it is square, but notice the dimension. Notice down in the VCB, the dimension says approximately 2 and 5 64ths, approximately 2 and 5 64ths. And that's because we started out with something that's 2 inches by 2 inches, but if you, because of the splaying and extending the top to make it flat, we no longer are making a perfect cross section of this stock, but rather a skewed cross section, which makes the sides longer. We'll get to this in part four. But for now, what we have is a leg. For the moment, let's, um, let's make this a leg, a component. We'll call it leg. I need four more. Now, if I remember from the original drawing, my legs were splayed, or I'm sorry, my legs were spaced nine and three quarters at the end, and um, if I remember correctly, 28 and five sixteenths in the front. So I'm going to take a rectangle. I'm going to start here with this magic point. I'm going to make that 28 and 5 sixteenths. by nine and three quarters. Now it's a simple matter of just copying, rotating, or actually not rotating, but uh, well, well, we'll just do it. First of all, I don't need the face of this. What I need to do is copy this leg. I'm gonna choose that point hit the control key. I'm going to place it here. Since I've moved it along the red axis, I'm going to flip it along red. And now I've got a splayed leg here. Now what I can do is I can take both of these Did I not move those out far enough? Let me go back. Oh, I see what happened. I flipped it and now I've got to move it again. So let me uh, let me get this where I want it. Up there. There we go. All right, now let me select both of them. And I'll move them to the back. With the control key. I've got to I don't know what happened there but let me select them again I've got to flip them along the green axis since, since that's the direction I move them and again I have to re move them into position there we go now, with a little luck, I got four legs in the appropriate place for my doughboy, or dough box. Get rid of these lines. There's one little piece of cleanup we should do before we leave. If I select this leg, notice that the bounding box is quite large in uh, especially this dimension here. And that's because of the splay of the leg. We when we make a cut list, the cut list will tell us the material, the size of the working stock we need, and it'll use the bounding box to determine that. Well, this bounding box is much too big. We, we sort of want to get the bounding box to be as small as possible. So what we'll do, bring in this little tool that I created called the Construction Plus Toolbar, and on it is a Draw Normal tool. So let me first of all click outside this area to get rid of the blue and select the draw normal. When I select that it says down here that it wants me to choose a face and I'm going to choose this face. Oh I'm going to choose this face right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. 
and now it wants me to select the point. I'm going to choose this point right there. And notice now I've got a point perpendicular to this face, which means it's also perpendicular to this line, from this point to here. Having done that, now I can choose this part, right click and say change axis. And I'm going to change the axis from here. I'm going to make the red axis along that line. Excuse me, let me do that again. That's not what I wanted to do. Change axis. I'm going to choose that point right there. If I can get to it. Oh, actually, those don't cross. Sorry about that. Well, here, we'll do this in two steps. I'll choose that axis, that line, and this line. And notice now that I've got a bounding box that is much more representative of the stock, the type of stock that I need. And if I click outside this area, get rid of my guidelines, and look at the others, they all have the correct bounding box. And so that's how we uh, correct for the fact that we splayed the legs and made the bounding box too big. Now I will get the correct dimensions for the overall stock that I need to create this leg. And there you have it. We have our four legs. I'm going to save this model uh, so that I have it for next week. In the meantime, you have a good week. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Good day.